This is your daily briefing, you're most welcome to it. And here we are in the hazy aftermath of a magnificent 5-1 win in Europe under the lights in the Europa Conference League. The, um, what was it somebody said on the channel earlier? The little um, of, of tournaments. The, the one thing I would say is apart from the comedy items in the middle aisle, Little and Aldi are great shops and we're not a great football team. Um, having to rely upon our elite players to come on and save the day, save our bacon against, let's call, look, I tell you what, this is, this is from Jack Adams, who, who regular contributor, a valued contributor to the channel. Um, NS Moore, the club's home ground has a capacity of 3,782. 3,782 seats and total capacity of the stadium is around five and a half thousand they were founded last week in 2012 from their youth club register playing in the slovenian top flight for nearly two years the privilege has 10 teams in it the most famous of which is probably moribor the town is known as murska sobota and with a population of 11,107. This is comparable to the town of Minehead in Somerset, where the population is 11,700, and the local football club is Minehead FC, with a ground capacity of 1,500, 1500 with 300 seated. Uh, their capacity may be smaller, but their history is much longer and comparatively impressive. Um, this is the football team, our second string of players, all on huge salaries, struggled to overcome and found themselves with a scoreline 2-1 against at the beginning of the second half. And this is the team against which we managed only five goals in total, conceded one and needed one of the best strikers in Europe in order to overcome them. Surely you would expect two things, that Harry Kane would score a hat-trick in training and that he would face a more professional, more highly trained, more highly paid defence in training than he found on the pitch last night. Even when we needed Son and Mora to pull, pull, we even needed Son and Mora to put their shoulder to the wheel as well. And what's, what's bad is not just that, um, and let me just stop you there, anybody, anybody, anybody even thinking of using the front, well you can only play the team in front of you, yeah, thanks. And today's quite bright and sunny. So what? You're just you're just describing things. You're not imparting any information. And what you're seeking to do is to stifle debate. So that doesn't work on here. This team was so bad that even our second string players, um, not only were they not good enough, but across the board, apart from the, the very best of our elite players, we were still making horrific errors. And by horrific, that may be an overstatement, but losing possession. Once you in adopt bad habits, they become ingrained. It's the same with good habits as well. But nobody says, you know, come on, let's ease up. There's no need scoring five against them. You should be ho hoping to score five against everybody. That should be the game plan. But what we do is we give the ball away a lot against everybody. And that's where Tottenham are. Um, let's spin through um, some of the players. I'm gonna keep this brief because I don't feel that we're unearthing anything um, mystical and uh, magical here. Um, Gallini, yet to deliver a clean sheet in any, any appearance at any level for the club so far. I wonder how much he cost. Sorry, but that's the yardstick. You, it's so rare in football and in life generally. Um, I bought a, we bought we bought a rice maker right this week because the other thing died. Bought a rice maker. You can I didn't realise you can pay silly money for rice makers. But we got a. This wasn't expensive. It wasn't massive money, but it makes fantastic rice or basmati anyway. That is a result. That's a bit of good fortune. Because one would expect, if you bought the Heston Blumenthal uh, rice maker, if the, the good gentleman even makes them, which you probably cut three or four hundred quid for, you'd expect that to be on the, on the, on the money. 
but this this thing wasn't that it was it was a hundredth of the price or whatever or tenth of the price and it makes great rice but footballers you can't be shipping in these guys for you know the dearest guy we bought who has still hasn't got isn't working properly yet Romero was only 47 point whatever million and that's the full money including all the add-ons so he, he's not cost 47 million nobody wrote a check for him and all I'm saying is it's the line I've used so many times and you've used yourselves buy cheap buy twice so Galini yet to have a clean sheet am I being miserable not really the guy you know just goalkeepers I understand they don't make perfect ones but this guy is is, is defective um, looking at um, Sergio Reguilon um, first team regular and he gave a ball he gave away the ball more than he did against Manchester City when we played them last month eight, eight occasions he managed to lose possession um, Romero I, I, I still I just want to see more of him um, I don't mind him playing in in the in this tournament which is very nice of me but I just you know this this is your 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 record signing of a particular window and he's not playing first team football and again I don't want to hear the excuses about oh yeah he's got the international the club should be working a way around this and all we get is Nuno who I'm finding frankly quite depressing to listen to these days his face is just annoying me those sort of cow eyes and oh yeah, yeah and the sincerity but he's I mean he's only deemed competent only deemed competent that's a good word to stumble over isn't it to contribute 13 minutes is he being saved for Aston Villa Doherty looked at his numbers and I thought well this isn't actually too bad but I could see loads of people like throwing their shoes at their, their monitors um, online but he was even more wasteful and he, he he lost the ball 12 times and 12 of the 12 times and on five occasions in his own half I mean this is against you know like a like I say I don't want to scold these guys because they're trying and they're, they're you know they're on their way up and it's a small place and you know the pool from which they can source players and they probably don't have any money and but you give the ball away a dozen times against this class of opposition what are you going to do against somebody that's decent and this is the same mystery player the same unidentified object <laughs> in the backing area that we bought from Wolves who was supposedly everybody keeps telling me he was a bit of a superstar at Wolves and the gaffer that was there is now here and he can't get a tune out of him um, Roden generally sound but also lost possession too frequently against opposition of this standard 11 times and five of those occasions were in his own half Deli Ali as captain was laughable is the kindest thing I can uh, suggest I, I'm finding it difficult to encounter see anybody online who is making a case other than Daniel Levy has instructed just play him play him through and he will come he will come good because there's a player in there and there's nothing in there all wrap no gift um, the penalty because of course we have these apologists we took yeah but he scored he did score I thought the penalty kick itself was rather soft um, and those of you who've read my work going back a million years I had the same problem with Robbie Keane and yeah no he scored lots of goals but he under hit 95% of them so penalty kick just yeah I so he scored hurrah but that penalty if you watch the thing now there was no VAR so it was down to this um, Israeli referee the penalty kick was because he'd attempted some weird little fairy kick and it was him that had put his heel of his other foot into the side of the goalkeeper I don't think that was a foul at all so what did we get from him then apart from my annoyance with the under hit penalty and the fair, fairy thing and you couldn't you couldn't write this could you um, seven failed attempted dribbles so this is the king of the nutmeg this is the, the bounty bar specialist seven failed attempt dribbles against a, a, a opposition at this level and the 12 and 12 attempted and failed offensive challenges 
So this just re re reinforces the image that we, we, I'm sure we all share now, of him just floating about. I don't see what he does. And the idea that he's captain and then he gets subbed off. Uh, Brian Gill doing his absolute best and in time is almost certainly going to become a very interesting player. But for now, I think this is a dangerous learning exercise exposing him to an awful lot of pressure at a very young age. Maybe he's lapping it up. Maybe it's going to make, be the making of him. Um, I'm just slightly concerned and I think that if... Nuno had other options, then he wouldn't play him. Lo Celso had a comparatively outstanding game. Um, one goal, one assist, but again, lost the ball a dozen times. And if you're going to do it against this lot, or if you're going to do it against your under-18s or under-19s on the training pitches, you've got a problem. Harry Winks passing. Enough to send an aspiring crack addict to sleep. Absolutely mind-blowing. Um, and it I mean, I understand from um, a colleague of mine who works for courtoffside.com that um, they are, that both the player and the club are of the same mind and January could see him moving on. But boy, has he been an absolute wage thief at Tottenham. Um, Lucas Moura, we saw 35 minutes of him, um, which... Again, I don't have a problem with any of those any of those minutes at all, but I just feel it was chipping away um, at energies he ought to have reserved for the Villa game at the weekend. Harry Kane, you must feel sorry for the boy. And Sonny, I refer to my comments about Harry Kane. Peter Crouch and Glenn Hoddle were just about the only two that were keeping me awake watching that game. Crouch says Tottenham's poor attacking stats in the Premier League are a huge concern and as, as, insists that we can't get carried away by a 5-1 victory over Mora. Um, Spurs managed um, just four goals from six games in the league, with only two teams scoring fewer than Nuno Espirito Santo's men. We're also bottom of the table for chances created and suffered a huge setback, um, both in terms, I think, you know, as far as the table goes, and also psychologically, I think getting thumped by Arsenal, thumped by Chelsea, and thumped by Palace, this is like telling the boxer now to, against Villa, go get back in the ring. Um, and and Villa will looking be looking to scent blood as soon as the the, the opening whistle goes. Um, if you take this game out of the equation, the results and performances have been poor. Crouch told BT Sport. Um, they've been bottom of the league for chances created, things haven't looked good defensively and they haven't been creating enough going forward. I don't think since the opening day of the season, I don't think it's been vintage Tottenham. No, it's been shocking and as I've said to you on numerous occasions, if Jose Mourinho was, was in charge of this um, uh, debacle, people would be going bonkers but Nuno's getting an easy ride there's a little bit of activity in the sort of Nuno out hashtag but there's no real force to it um, people are, are more focused on getting rid of Levy and Enoch but they have missed the boat you should have done it and I'm going to keep saying this until the penny drops you should have done it before they demolished the lane but you were inactive you sat on your haunches and he just didn't do anything. And that was the time to speak up. I spoke up, numerous other people spoke up, but you've missed the boat. So enjoy your time with your bed sheets, but you're not gonna change anything. I'm not superhuman, <laughs> I'm not in league with the devil. I can't prevent you from changing anything, but I'm just telling you, you may as well shout at the sky and tell it to the sun to stop shining. You haven't got a chance. Uh, Hoddle noticed um, lack of clarity between Nuno and his players um, and he, he, he said he looked as if they're in between. I don't see clarity at the moment. When Spurs were top of the league after three games, there were stories behind the three games and that's absolutely right. People were so focused on we're top of the league that they were throwing analysis and, and critical thinking out with the baby and the bathwater, the whole thing. No, 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 don't worry about that, don't worry about that. Look at the table, look at the table. And especially with Arsenal being at the bottom. And it was it was just it was just a, a festival for time wasters. That's what it was. Wolves and Watford were tight. There was a bit of a false dawn there. 
there's a hell of a lot of work needed on the training ground in the next few weeks they've got players in there if they can press like they did tonight they can go on and Spurs host Villa on Sunday as they look to get back to winning ways following three straight defeats in the league I take a view that Nuno is we should be under no mistake is is limping from one close shave to another his pressers um, I've said this before but I'm going to keep saying it I don't see it so much as him being cautious I think he's actually quite broken and he is refusing to tell the truth now I know he can't tell the truth don't get me wrong but I think he's his his ability to talk normally um, has pretty much expired there was an interesting thing and I know some of you don't watch the pressers because I know they don't get massive numbers but they are worth watching for certain bits of information and there was there was a curious business where um, I think it was Ali Gold asked Nuno about Ben Davis and where he was and what the, the, the story was there and he asked the his oppo he asked the the, the um, press officer or whoever he is he asked him for permission to go public with the fact that he had an inflamed um, appendicitis or something he had an upset tummy I don't know I'm not a doctor but that tells me where we are there and that and and some people will look at the way that Nuno speaks and say that you know that it's nice to see a bit of old world charm and you know when somebody's asking me a question he says thank you very much sir I don't want my football managers talking like that I mean he comes across as a subservient character um, he's not the owner of the hotel he's he, he who, who welcomes you with the sort of you know and I hope you enjoy your stay he is the Manuel character who is worried if he's going to get a newspaper or a serving tray over the back of the head as he scampers off upstairs crouched over your bags um, it, it, it's it's it, it's not working it's not working um, but anyway I can go on for days uh, talking about this because I just the body language and I, he just looks absolutely broken and as I say he's he's limping from one close shave to another um, there's a protest coming up, um, an anti-unit pro protest, um, which isn't going to achieve anything. Um, I would warn you to stay away from these people. There are some pretty mediocre people involved in this. I'll say no more at this stage, but pretty mediocre is, is, is pretty bloody generous of me. Um, so just careful, careful, careful where you sit down and who you share your sandwiches with. That's all I'll say. But um, Villa will tell us more, and um, I don't want to close like this all the time, but despite them, keep it on.